What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. A happy New Year's to you people. Hey, hey, what's up, man? Right now I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm enjoying the sun. I'm playing golf. I'm living my best life telling jokes. Come see me. I'm on the road. I'm running around the country in the new year. 2022 is about to be lit. Uh, I'm going to Kansas City. I'm going to St. Louis. I'm going to Washington, D.C. I'm going to Atlanta, Chicago, Illinois, Albany, Foxwoods. Vancouver, Seattle, Portland, uh, and why and what? Vegas. I'm all over the place. I was gonna say watch. I'm at Win, the Win in Vegas. I'm everywhere. Go to andrewsantino.com for those tickets. Andrewsantino.com. Come support your boy in the new year. Uh, my guest today, love this dude, Brian Simpson. My boy Brian has a special out right now on Netflix. Please watch it. Watch this first, then go watch the special. You're gonna love it. Uh, very, very funny dude. Half hour out on Netflix right now. Brian Simpson, super funny dude. Go see him. Come see me on the road. AndrewSantino.com. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today, especially today. It's my man, Brian Simpson. Brian, thanks for coming, man. What's happening, Ray? My man. All right, so look, what did you pour up? I did, I did some Buffalo Trace. It's a little buff, buff, little buff, buff. I'm going to go, um, I think I'm going to do some, a little bit of Woodford today. A little, little splash of Woodford. What did you ask me before we started the show? I said, do you feel like there's a such thing as enough money? I think an, I th- enough money is... I think there's such thing as too much money. I don't think enough money is weird. I think sometimes people have get too much money. Like, well, like, do you think you could you would get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm making enough money. I don't need. I'm I'm not doing any more stuff. But what would I do then? Then when, where would I go? What would you do? You would keep doing podcasts and the stand up and stuff, but you wouldn't take on more shit. Yeah, but then I look at a guy like Kevin Hart, and then you're like, what is it? What's fueling it? You ha- he has all of the money, but it must be because he really enjoys it. It must be fun. I think somebody said one time that he said he got so many no's for like 20 years that he was like, well, I'm never going to say no to them ever again because all I got was no's. Now I'm going to say yes to everything if they're going to give it to me. I don't know if he said that or if that was kind of through the grave, one of those, you know, things that someone was like, that's the way it went with him. But I don't know, man. I, I think if it sounds fun, why would you say no? If it, like, you don't have to do stuff that you don't want to do at some point. That's great. Oh, right, yeah. But if it sounds fun, why? I mean, I don't know. Why not? Cheers, by the way. Cheers, my man. Brian Simpson is a talented, incredible comedian uh, who's got a right now, right, right now, right yeah. now, because this will be out, and the Netflix half hours are out right now, aren't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, right now, you can go on Netflix and watch this dude. There's other people on there, but who cares? Don't watch their shit. Right. Fuck them all. Skip it. Skip no. it. Skip it. Skip it. No, there's other people that are good on there. Norman's on there, right? Norman's on there. Yeah. Hey, Simpson. Um, Naomi's on there. I mean, I, th- I feel like everybody was pretty good, man. Melissa. And, and Melissa. Via Senor. Who else was on uh, there with you guys? Dusty Slay was on there. Dusty Slay. I don't know him. I know him, but I don't know him. Uh, I've heard of him. You know Janelle James. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. I mean, I, Dusty's one of those guys that I think I've crossed paths. You know when you like when I see the lineups for the <clears throat> the next person coming into town at the club. Okay. It's it's always like his name I see all the time. If I'm like, oh, he was just here, or he's on his way. It's like ships in the night. I see guys come and go, but I don't know him. But he did good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody had it was it was a very uh, like diversity of styles. Like everybody yeah. had a different kind of vibe and shit. You know, who did the worst? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not powerful enough to say that. No, not yet. No. Not yet, Simpson. Not yet, Brian. Um, we met uh, we met through the world of comedy. I, I think people should know who you are. I'm a fan. We talked a while ago about. You coming on the show, and then I said, you know what the perfect time would come do this show would be when your shit's coming out, oh, man, yeah. and promote it and get people to come watch it. We did we did some shows together. Um, yeah, I think I opened for you in Abrea, right? Yeah, we're, we'll do. We should do more together, man. I mean, you're you're good enough, and you're <clears throat> you're strong enough where you can be on your own. So it's tough to want to take you. That's oh, your yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, ha- it's gonna happen though. This year, yeah, you're uh, yeah. you're on your own now. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. Sm- I'm smoking. Yeah. Are you are, are you 
doing rooms now? Are you getting weekends and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of things booked. You know, you know, how the, the 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 team is like strategic about it. Because the team, yeah, the team, the team, the team, as it were, the, the people guys. who sit at their desks all day and that are just like, <laughs> we've got you another gig. <laughs> yeah, because it's like you know, you gotta, you know, after there's a there's a there's a number where after the special, there's a there's a certain amount of time where you peak. Where, where you get the max benefit from. Right, right, right. So that's when you want to book. Like your star meter goes up. Right, exactly. Mm, like so Because no, it's not like everyone's going to run out and watch it the, the night it comes out. And people, But I do think with Netflix, people really do watch. I mean, they go right for those specials and watch them because I, I think it's just so convenient. Yeah. I think people just really want convenience. They don't want to go find it. And if they're already on Netflix because they're watching stuff all day. If they push it, if they push it. You don't think they they might not push it, huh? I don't know. I don't know what the people. I, but I'm gonna have an issue if they don't. You know. What do you? What's the answer then? If you if they if they don't push it and it just goes away, can you try to get it back from Vi- them? Violence. <laughs> <laughs> people are outside of Netflix protesting Dave Chappelle special. You're out there just trying to get your special yeah, back. No. Nope. Promote my special. <laughs> yeah, you know nobody 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 set it off up in there. That's why they didn't take them serious. <laughs> I know. It was so funny that people were protesting at Netflix about Dave Chappelle special. <laughs> The irony of that was staggering to me. I'm not saying you don't have a, a right to get... You have a right to not like Dave's stuff and get upset with his material. As an American citizen, good for you. That's your... Go yeah. go, go. have your freedom to get bummed about it. But to go yell at a corporate building on Sunset is odd to me. Or to leave... Because see, the, 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 other, take part, off work. the other part about it is, is like, it's, it's no secret to like this, a lot of people in this industry. A lot of the entities are trash. Yeah. Sure. But Netflix has a reputation for treating their employees like awesome. Yeah, it's like Google when yeah. they're like, we watch your kid. You can go to the gym and <laughs> we'll also make dinner for your whole family. Yeah. Right, right. It's like- no, Netflix has a good rep with their employees. But that doesn't matter. All that stuff, The this is proof. This is like a microcosm of how America really, really feels deep down inside. Is like if you bug people at all and you upset them at all, they'll stop at nothing to try to defame, demoralize uh, uh, rip you down. They they oh, love yeah. that. If you if you struck a weird nerve, people are like, I'm gonna do everything in my power. Po- Look what Yelp, Yelp, dude, Yelp, yeah. Yelp. We have a fucking app built so people can complain. It what? It no way that they made that to leave good reviews. You no, know that? No. That's impossible because most people don't. Most people don't leave a review unless they have a bad time. Correct. Right. Because if the food is good, I'll just go back. Right, right. I'll, I'll tell people. I'll yeah. tell. I'll tell friend. Yeah, dude, we went to that new spot, that Italian joint. It's good. I'm not gonna write online. I don't I, have the patience. I was done with Yelp because I I got caught up in it myself. Because there's another thing too. When you don't have, when you're not used to having power, mm-hmm. and then you have this power, you it, it, some it can go to your go to your head, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember late night drunk going to this burrito spot, um, in San Diego. It was on like the main road. I forget which street it was, and I get home. And there's a fucking mop string in my burrito. <laughs> a mop, like seriously, I pull it out. It's in my teeth. In the, it's, a, it's a fucking mop string, bro. Just the idea of a dude in the kitchen. He's like, "Fuck it, we need help on the grill." He's like, "Hold on, hold on." Just throws it down and mop. Yeah, right man, into your dude, burrito. I, I fucking, I made myself throw. I was so pissed off. Yo, man. that's so yeah, foul. And I, and I went on Yelp. And I wrote the most <laughs> scathing, like three paragraph, like I'm so appalled, like, just, and I and and um and and it turned out that and, and it it was online for maybe like a week and a half, and all my friends I put I shared it on Facebook and all of this. This was mm-hmm. years ago, and then I found out that the uh, the place that I'd actually got my burrito from wasn't on Yelp. And I just yelped the place that was closest to it that had nothing to do with it. Yeah. You know, and it was like, what the fuck? That because that's like that's like the petty, 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 petty equivalent of like shooting the wrong person or uh-huh. you know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I can't handle this power. This, no one should have this power. Do you realize what you just said, that story, by the way? How like that's literally what's going on. Yeah. Is people don't care if they don't hit the right target. As long as they spray near it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people, when someone's mad at someone for something, they're mad at all the entities near them, around them, and associated with them, no matter what it is. And you get, you get, you get social credit too for just, for just complaining, for just right. posting right. something that people go, yeah, fuck them. You yeah. Know? Fuck that. Yeah, fuck all them. And you're like, that was the wrong restaurant. It's like, fuck all Mexican restaurants. Yeah, like fuck them anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's the problem. I think we're getting to that point. 
where power is that power is that power is fucking dangerous man it is weird what the internet has done is that's why i think what we talked about before the show as well you know is the only thing i have control over nowadays is my stand up on stage and this podcast because no one tells me what to do there's no one telling me what to say there's no directions that i need to follow we get to this is the only time that i'm super free when i'm acting or when we're writing or when i'm producing something or whatever I have, I, there's so many other cooks that like you throw in your little spice, but Man. that's all you get. I mean, See, that's not your dish. I'm cool when it comes to the acting and stuff like that. I'm cool with people telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. I just, when it comes to what's funny. Wow. I, when someone that isn't funny is trying to tell me what's funny, <laughs> I, I just, I, I literally want to murder them. Like I have to put all my <laughs> self control into just, into not being. Yeah violent yeah or they're not violent but just not being aggressive aggressive yeah because yeah, yeah. you're not an you're you're a you're a you're a sweet warm person but inside you've got the rage yeah you've got it yeah you constantly it, yeah. but that's what makes you funny right not every single one <laughs> say okay i don't know if i can even say oh fuck you it, can fuck say it. anything no i was arguing with uh someone about what to put on on a late night thing like a late night set. Yeah, and and yeah. they actually said to me, D uh, "Does does the baby have to die?" And I was like, "Well, someone's got to die." <laughs> this whole joke was about people I wish were dead. You know, <laughs> like if you really yeah. if you really zoom out and look at the whole thing, it's like, yeah, it's, someone's got to die because that's that's the joke. That's the joke, right? And also, everybody dies, bud. Yeah, babies do die. Yeah, but apparently, like they didn't like it. The network didn't like it. <sighs> I just, you know what it is, man. It's like I feel like late night used to mean like like the kids are in bed. This is for this is for yeah, adults for grown people. Now it just means it doesn't mean that it doesn't. It's now it's like um, it's like stuff you could watch at dinner with your whole family. Right. That's kind of what late night feels like now. Right. Carson used to have this mystique about him that was like it's after hours. It's this late. I'm see smoking. People are drinking. Right. You know, it was unbridled. It was kind of it was kind of and and honestly what's kind of wild is you see like Fallon and Kimmel and all these other late night guys. And this is not to discredit these guys. It's a new time. It's just a different world. But like it, they're very regimented. They're very formatted. The shows are extremely formatted up to commercial breaks. And with Carson, obviously they did commercial breaks, but Man, it was just, it felt like jazz almost. I mean, I used to love it when I was a kid. Yeah. And it just felt so, I don't know, like there was no agenda. Almost like people were kind of, go. it was. Almost, it looked like it was, everyone was freestyling a little bit. Like, oh, we're figuring out as we go. We all know we're good and we can all kind of keep this thing moving. They would try out bits and sketches and stuff. And sometimes it worked, sometimes it kind of didn't work, but it yeah. wasn't as reliant upon a superstar name having a great story about, you know, you know why? your car getting towed. Because back then it was it was new. Right. And now it's a bunch of people that are like, well, it, it should be like this. Like they're, they're trying to live up to what they think that was. Right. And they didn't have that back then. They were just being funny. They were just doing it. Right. Yeah, yeah that is so true. Yeah, no, the late night thing is tough. And also people giving you notes. That's how you know you're in the corporate world once you've sold your jokes to a company even though it's an amazing thing to be on Netflix and have your special, that's incredible. You still know there's a weird moment when they've read through your jokes through S and P to make sure that it's oh, all yeah, good for a yeah. corporate. That's very strange. But but you know what though, Netflix was very reasonable. Yeah, they should. Well, they should they, be. They didn't actually. They didn't change anything. Well, I they're mean, the internet, right? What? Well, uh, what? I mean, they're the internet. It's like. Oh yeah. What would I, they be scared of? I I think you know, I think there were definitely things they wanted me to shy away from. But they were just like, but you can do whatever you want. You know? What did they say? You shouldn't. You should probably not no, say no. No. Yeah. Good. No. Never. When I did my half hour with Comedy Central, they got into a big gripe about me not saying the brand name of the acne medication I took as a kid, Ugh. because they were spot. You know, Pfizer was probably a Viacom overlord. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. They probably have. Um, dude, that, that shit's scary, man. Yeah, dude, it's so. I couldn't say Accutane. Accutane is the is the is the brand name of the medicine, I think, and it was associated with. Death. Well, the joke was about sui about suicide, right? And it was about, you know, I my mother had to sign a consent form when I took it back then, saying, you know, it can cause severe depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and suicidal thoughts. Perhaps, but did it work? Look at my skin, dog. <laughs> <laughs>
No, you know what? <clears throat> I've got some leftovers. But yeah, no, it worked for the most part. But honestly, I, the joke was that my mother was like, you know, looking at all this dangerous shit and then looked at my face and was like, yeah, I mean, you know, you can you can always count on your mom <laughs> is trying to get you laid. I know. From jump. Like she my mom's like, like that too. It's like, yo, you look. You know what I mean? You gonna have to do change this and change that if you're trying to <laughs> like she like she never outright says it. Mm -hmm. You trying to get some pussy? Yeah. Oh, no, but she, but it's all you know. Like she, you wearing that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you don't No no no, it's you did I I want you to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, uh, I want you to do what you want to do. Yeah. Or you bring you bring a uggo home, she's like, oh, okay. Oh, nice. Right, right. She's nice. Yeah, if that's, if that's what you're into. <laughs> <laughs> the judgment from your mom. Yeah, we, um, were you, you, you told me at one point, we talked a little bit about it. You, you were in the service, weren't you in the service? I was, yeah. For how long? For five years. Wild, man. Yeah, it was a long fucking, you know what's so that's weird? It's a long time. What's weird about that shit, though, is that was, I just, I, that was back in 2001. Yeah. I got out in 06. But, but here we are, way in 2021. I still it is it is the single most it's the it's the thing that I get the most credit for from a long time ago. You know what I mean? Right. Like yeah. I've been a, I've been a comedian almost three times as long as I was in the service. Yeah, no, going no, not really, but like at least twice as long. Right, and I get still get more credit for that for being a and I wasn't good at it. <laughs> That's the thing. I was not good at any of. Any military duties at all? No. But you didn't want to be good, right? I did it first. It was, it was about six months where I was all, maybe, no, maybe like a year and a half where I was all about it. I was mm -hmm. all in. and um, You drank the Kool-Aid a little bit. Yeah, because you have to. Yeah. Like, if you're going to be happy, like the people that do 15, 20 years, and shit, for them first 15 years, you got to be all in to, be, to not be miserable. Right. And, but then I realized, oh, this is bullshit. Like all the yeah. stuff that we, all the mantras, they're all non, it's all to get you to just follow orders as quickly as possible and believe in the mission and all that shit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, but it works really well. It does work. Some people yeah. really get soaked into and it. I, and I am all about it being in place. Yeah. Just not me being subject to it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm down. I want people to fight. I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a hell of a lifestyle. And it's weird too now that I got homies that's about to retire next year, like, you know? And they're done, done. That's they're, it. They're done, done. Wow. 20 years in. And what do they do? Because they get out and what are the hell are they, 50? They're 40. Holy shit. You retire. That's the beautiful thing about the military, man. If you can stick it out for 20 years. 20 years of bullshit. And fucking your Now, they 60 in the body. Yeah. Yeah, your body fucked up. Right. Yeah, you know, you, you got all kind of, I mean, you know, you get out with knee problems, brain problems, back problems, you know, but you retiring at 40. Damn. And it's a nice retirement. I think your retirement is like, it's like eighty percent of what your what your pay was for the rest of your life for your whatever your highest pay was. So even if you get in trouble and get knocked down a peg, if you make it to twenty years without getting kicked out, you get a percentage of the highest pay you ever had. Ah, damn. Yeah. Until you're dead. Until you're dead. That's dope. Yeah, and then and then I think and then I think your wife gets it. Yeah, you know, well, that's like pensions used to be that way. I don't even know about pensions anymore. My grandmother is living off my grandfather's pension. He worked for the city. He was a firefighter in Chicago, and you know. I'm not, I don't know, I'm not really down with that because I'm like, oh, you're just going to pay these people for the rest of their life, all these motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Well, they paid into it. I, a, a little bit. Okay, not a little bit, not all of it. Yeah, but all that shit's gone. Ain't nobody got no fucking pictures there. Ain't Thank no, God, good, yeah. No, no but, I, but I'm happy she got it, though. I'm happy my grandmother got it. It keeps her alive, you know? Because yeah. when my grandfather died, and then she now has, and it, uh, first of all, and it's also not an exorbitant amount of money. It's not like she's cashing 80 Gs a week, like, oh, oh yeah, shit, yeah. no. But also, <clears throat> it is a wild concept. Because nobody else has that, particularly us. It is weird. You know, I had to learn about saving for the future when I got my first check in, in comedy. Yeah. Because my dad was like, dude, you don't have, there's no retirement plan for you. There's no 401k. You don't have like options in a company. Yeah, that's the scary shit. Yeah, you have to learn how to like, that's why when people are like, when, when you become, when you start to get a little bit of success and you become a little like Hollywood or whatever, it just means you're, you're have, you have to like grow up with money. Because when you're young as a comedian, when I started and I was 23, every dime I made, we spent the day of. Right. Because I had to, and it was fun. And what else was I going to, I mean, I wasn't going to save the 40 bucks. And it's, you know what's so amazing about it too is it happened to me immediately. I, I've been poor my whole life. I've had roommates my entire, I've never had my own place. Right. My entire life. And, and I got that check from Netflix and it was just sitting in my account because I was like, I don't know what to do with this to not fuck it up. 
And until I know, I'm not fucking moving a dime of this shit. See? Because you got to grow up with the money yeah. because our world doesn't, we're not used to that. Where, yeah. you know, other people get out of college and they start getting checks and they yeah. work this desk job and then they grow in the company and then they, they go to a new company. And it's just, we. I saw that as I got went up. But I, it's just our world was never that way. We get chunks of money at one time, and then it's all gone. And then chunks of money at one time. You have a, um, you know, my little wake up call was as I, uh, you have a, you have a go to go in the ATM behind somebody and they lead a receipt. You know? Oh yeah. And you, and, <laughs> and I look, I, I was, it was a smoke shop that used to be behind that Starbucks by this comedy store. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? And somebody left a receipt in the ATM, and I pull it out, and it was like a hundred and eighty thousand dollars balance in the checking. Yeah, in the checking. I'm like, who in the fuck? Because this is comics or people that work at the Saddle Ranch. Right, right. Who the fuck has a hundred? And- <laughs> I'm like I must be doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. Like nobody. I actually, I actually like to find the receipts when it's like you know, eighty eight hundred, and I'm like, okay, that's not bad. And then you'll find another one that's like one hundred and twenty six bucks left, and you're like, this yeah. guy, this guy pulling out one twenty, just hoping that lasts. I love to find that insufficient funds, you know, <laughs> that rejection. Yeah. Try another ATM. In here, we pour whiskey. Hey, making content is an essential part of what I do to keep this show going. It hasn't always been a seamless creative process. Back when we started the show, we were getting different people doing different things, and it was really hard to coordinate and work together to do that because there were so many different uh, files that we were sharing. And finding Canva Pro has helped um, designing like a pro uh, on any device. I got to tell you, Canva Pro is a design it's a design platform that empowers you to create and share stunning content just a few clicks. Um, they've got beautiful templates. You can do it on your own if you'd like from scratch, but they have thousands of easy uh, templates that are customizable, uh, very user-friendly. Uh, endless premium fonts, photos, videos, and so much more that add personality and edge to whatever it is that you're designing. Designing together has never been easier. Sharing, editing, and commenting in real time. Canva Pro helps you stay organized on the same page and on top of team projects. No more misplaced files or tedious back and forth. Uh, by the way, you can access all this stuff with your teammates for $12.99 a month, which is remarkably cheap uh, for how much you're getting. Uh, and Canva Pro, these features about uh, of sharing truly, not losing files or going digging back in emails, which is so annoying, is something they help with. And I got to tell you, design like a pro yourself uh, with Canva Pro. Right now, you can get a free, free 45-day extended trial when you use my promo code. Just go to canva.me slash whiskey to get your free 45-day extended trial. That's canva, C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash whiskey, canva.me slash whiskey. Hello Fresh. Man, have I talked about Hello Fresh a lot on my show and on me and Boo Boo show. I love Hello Fresh. You get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip them trips to the grocery store. Save on Hello Fresh. Make home cooking easy, fun and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit and it really is. I love this stuff. I really do love Hello Fresh because I'm stupid and I don't like to cook that much and this makes it very easy. And the new time is a great year to focus on what's more important to you, whether it's saving money, ordering less takeout, learning to cook, prioritizing your wellness. HelloFresh is here to help you with endless options. Make cooking at home simple, enjoyable, easy, fun, and delicious. Uh, look, it de- they deliver these pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm fresh produce that arrives within a week so you get convenience without skimping on the quality. Skip those trips to the grocery store. HelloFresh cuts back on time spent at the kitchen. You can spend it with your fam, dude, people you love, or your friends. Uh, those meals are, are about 30 minutes or less, which I think is pretty impressive. They've got quick and easy meals, including 20-minute recipes, uh, low prep, easy cleanup, and uh, don't forget the dessert. You know they got that sweet stuff for the sweet tooth. Satisfy your sweet tooth with seasonal limited-time goodies. Dunkaroo cookie dough or vanilla delight cheesecake. Oh, boy. It's 72% cheaper. Uh, then a restaurant meal of the same quality, and you can save on average over $65 a month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. Is that not enough for you? They got 50 menu market items to choose from every week. Veggie, calorie smart, family friendly, gourmet options. They got plenty of variety. Get it together, man. HelloFresh, I do love cooking it because I'm a bad cook and I like directions. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Whiskey16 and use code Whiskey16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. What do you want? This is so good. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Whiskey16. Use the code Whiskey16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Ginger. I like gingers. I don't understand. (laughs) Uh, You know, I don't understand how there, there is so much money in comedy, but like anything else, it's so, it's not dispersed well. I mean, so many comics have all the money. I mean, those dudes sell out arenas and there's weekend warriors that are making... Just, just to get by. Yeah, but they're both legitimate comedians. It just depends, you know, depends on where you fall. 
In comedy, it's so un, it's so oddly unfair. But also, that's the game we chose. You well, knew it was going to be this well, way. We, well, well, I think it's something a lot of people miss is as much as we might hate it, you kind of somewhere along the line we let show business. It, like it's integrated somehow. We're like, you can't just be a great comic. No. The industry has to latch on to you at some point. Right. You'll never, you cannot, well, it's not absolutely impossible, but it's it's real hard to blow up without them co-signing. Of course. You know? Uh, you can do it on your own to some degree, but at, at other points it's just, there is a ceiling that yeah. you hit when you're on your own. Like the Brian Regans, that's 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 the thing. That's never gonna happen again. Never again. Where, he, where he's like secretly like Garth Brook famous. You know what I mean? Where it's like <laughs> you never hear about what he's doing, and, right. but but he's selling out arena. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like that's not gonna happen again. No, I think that's the end of that road. Also, uh, such a good dude. So funny. Oh, he's so fucking. I funny. was in Madison. He was in Madison, and um, Emmy Blotnick was there too. Do you know her? Yeah. Yeah. We were all there. He was playing the theater, like the Orpheum or whatever it is. I was playing a small little um, tiny theater, like a rock venue. She was playing comedy on stage. We met up afterwards, and I just didn't realize how many tickets he sold. I mean, it was it's just crazy. It's insane. Yeah, and, yeah. and he's really, he is, for what it's worth, under the radar as far as like, he's not super famous outside of stand-up. No. But in stand-up, yeah, everybody knows, but a lot of people know him, but... It is interesting to see guys that are mega famous in their niche of stand-up and they sell so many tickets. But outside of that, I don't think he would get stopped on the street. No. Um, unless someone saw his bit on something. You know, and they're like, oh, yeah. I think that looks like that guy. Well, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a radius, like within, within five blocks of where he's performing, mm -hmm. he'll get stopped. Right. But if he's up the street, nobody gives no, a, yeah. shit. <laughs> give a shit. But that's what I want. Like yeah. if, I, if that's my if I could be like that and just be stand up famous and and then get, the further I get from the arena, no one knows who I am. That's perfect. I doubt it though. No? No, nah, not for, you'll probably just you'll probably just get famous famous. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'll take it though. Yeah, I'm, you probably will. That's man. better than what I was before. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Yeah, because it hurts, man. It hurts to be, to be funny enough with motherfuckers like you, and Rogan and Segura, and are going, you fucking got it. Yeah, you know what I mean. And but to not have anything other than that, like that, that it hurts, man. To be like, when am I gonna fucking like? Because there's no, there's no handbook. There's no pamphlet. Right. There's no, and there's, and there's certainly no line. You don't, you can't just like get in a line and be like, I'm up next. You know, it's like, well, I'm next to be the president of the club, you know? Right. No, right. it's not that way. It's just you have to just keep. But look, I mean, tr the truth be told, you know, it, it it worked very well now. Like the time uh, you spent. I putting, knew it was going to happen eventually. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you also knew your peers that it wasn't going to happen to, and you still got to keep playing that game with them. <sighs> now that hurts too. Because do you get a little bit of hate from friends because you got the Netflix special? Um... You'll get more. It's hate disguised as love. Yeah, so it'll my, keep coming. My real friends, no. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But because uh, you can tell when people genuinely happy for you. Uh huh. But some people are like, "Oh, you okay? You?" <laughs> and you can kind of hear that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you. That's good that. for you. Yeah, right. That's, that's good for that's you. Good for you. Yeah. I hit you up as soon as I knew. I was so happy for you, man. I was excited as shit. I was like, it just made me feel good. No, I hit you up. Oh, but I knew. Oh, you knew before that. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They told me. They told me who was doing it, and I was like, oh, that's, I was I'm, happy. You're like, I'm above this. <laughs> I was just happy for you. I, inside, it made me feel a type of way. I was, And then people, we had all talked about it. A lot of guys had been talking about who was getting it. Yeah. Because it was rolling well, well, around. That, but see, that's the other thing. Nobody funny is mad that I got it. No. Why like, would they? That's what an insane idea. People that, are, people that are secure in their careers and in their comedy, they don't, they use, they're the coolest people. Usually. Yeah, no, yeah. Why would they care? It's a strange, well- it's how I feel about most issues in general. I, I don't have time to care about. Yeah. I don't have time to care in a negative fashion. It's like, you know, this week uh, they they were showcasing for the store for who gets passed. Yeah. And and so all, it's weird to all the people in the showcase. It's like they got all this camaraderie, you know, because mm -hmm. they're not like, okay, yeah, but wait till y'all find out who won. Yeah. <laughs> You know what that is when they put the list outside, like in, 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 in basketball or something, it's on the window. You got to go up with everyone and find out who made the team. Right. Yeah. Training and, training camp, you were hugging and brothers. Right, and then you're right. like, oh, you got cut, poor guy. You know? <laughs> Lose my number, bro. <laughs> yeah, speaking of camp, I saw you, I, we were talking before, I saw you took, took a picture with Mahomes and Kelsey, and I got to tell you, uh, Travis 
Travis and I went out and played golf the other day and he was saying how funny we were because I said, how long did you guys stay? Because they came, uh, saw my set and then saw Bobby and then I- And I went up right after Bobby. Right after Bobby because I, I, I told him I had to leave. I was like, I'll come back, but I had to go to Largo. So he was like, can we stay? I was like, you should stay. I, don't come down there. I mean, it's that's never going to work. So he, they stayed and he got to see Bobby and you. And I was happy he got to see you. I was like, how long did you guys stay? Did you guys dip early? He's like, no, we saw Brian and I saw you post a picture. And he said, man, he is a de- he is deep funny. Yeah. Deep funny. That's a good, that was, I was like, that's a really good way of explaining you. Deep funny. Yeah, I didn't know they were there. Yeah, it's good but, to not, not know if people but, are there. And then I got off stage and, and left up and somebody was like, hey man, the fucking Chiefs were in the back of the room and they were laughing their ass off of you. Yeah. And so I walked up and dapped him up and I was like, hey, after the show, can I get a pick? And he was like, let's do it right now. And I knew, because I'm like, this is going to start a thing where everyone's going to start asking for pictures. Sure, of course. But, you know. It is what it is. And like I said, I was like, hey, man, look, if y'all had lost yesterday, I would have left y'all to fuck alone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sorry for this. I think I think their their life is good enough that they're willing to take photos. Yeah, they're I mean, y'all, y'all want a close y'all want a close, close yeah, game. Yeah. Also, this was funny. The other, with, with Travis and I, this guy, this is what it's like being hit, that kind of famous. Because, you know, you see people that you know that are levels of famous and like when you're near it and you watch it, it's kind of weird to see how people react to them. And this guy was like, hey, oh my God. Because they can't believe they're there. Yeah. And he goes, can I take a picture? And Travis was very nice and he was like, yeah, of course, yeah, no doubt, you know? And he goes to like kind of get up and the guy just takes a photo of him. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> Bro, it was you so fucking, fucking weird. I was like, what the fuck was it? And then Travis turned to me like, was that, was he fucking with me? Like, he thought maybe he was fucking with him or something? I was like, no, that that's not him making a joke. That was that man's, that yeah. was what he wanted. Because when you're, when you're, at least this is just me imagining, but when you're athlete famous, mm-hmm. you, you make some men act like women. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Because they want yeah. to be you. Yeah, so bad. The, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because like, it is. It's it's don't standing beside these motherfuckers and they six foot four and yeah. it's like you you like I I want I envy I don't just envy I don't just want to be able to do what I saw you do. It's like I want I would rather be you than me. Like that's how some people think. Right. And they just they just, they just get their brains get scrambled. Yeah, they get scrambled and they t- and they say weird stuff and they try to associate. That's always funny. This 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 dude. He's sweet, but he was like, uh, I, I was uh. I was all state in football. You know, it's like, oh my God, bro. Are you telling a fucking, <laughs> are you telling a Super Bowl, future Hall of Famer, that you were all state in football and now you're working for fucking Staples corporate? Just cut it out. You got to forgive people for that shit. Man. I do. It's funny. I just, I laugh it off, but I just think it's strange when people go out of their way to say things to people that, because I just, it's not well thought out. They don't know what to say. I know. Don't it's, say anything. It's like they have, they have, they they weren't expecting to see you. They have three seconds to, because they, because they, they in their mind they're like, if I don't, this is my only chance to ever say anything to this person. Yeah, it's gone forever. So I'm just gonna, I, okay, three seconds. This is what I got. I also <laughs> play, <laughs> play football. football. I'm all state. I was all state. <laughs> and what do you expect them to say back? That's the weirdest part. I whenever I meet someone that's like, you know, someone I really admired. I just, rem- I remember the way I feel when I see other people do it. So I just log that in. Like, just say one thing about how you appreciate what they do, and that's it. Like Bill Murray. I sat next to Bill Murray at a um, Golden State Warriors game. I didn't want to say anything the whole game, and it was over. Then I just turned. He was like three street seats away from us because my buddy uh, got us his ticket through the Warriors. And I turned to him, and I just was like, I'm a huge fan. I'm a Chicago kid. I just want to say I love I love you. And then he was like, oh, Chicago. And then he stopped me. Like, I thought it was like, I'm going to walk away. And he was like, oh, no, no, no. And he was chatting me a little bit. And then he was like, you want to do a picture? And I was like, yeah. I, like, I didn't expect any of it. But I think, I think if you want the best results of someone you really admire like that, because I wouldn't, I don't bother most, most people. But if I, like him, it's different. I love Bill Murray. I was obsessed when I was a kid. So I was like, I have to at least say, I appreciate you, and that's all I wanted to do. And it opened up that other door of him being like, "Oh, you know, we have something in common." No, 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 no. You ever meet a rival? You know, <laughs> like if I like like I'm, I was a Skins fan growing up, and it's mm-hmm. like if I ever met like Troy Aikman or somebody, it was like you know I was I would have to be honest because that's the thing with 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 Kelsey and it was like I'm not a Chiefs fan. Yeah, like, I didn't want to be fake and be like I love you guys. No, I don't. 
<laughs> I think you, I think Patrick has has he's future. I think they both future Hall of Famers. Yeah, I think he's got one of the best arms ever. But I don't love you, motherfuckers. Right, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You've ruined so many of my weekend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I but I recognize the skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't love you. See, I well, it, I understand. I I understand that. That's like for me, um, as a Bears kid. Uh, and people are like, oh, you're wearing a Rams shirt. This is because it was free when you go to the game. This, 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 is, a, this is a bobblehead uh, that I'm wearing. Uh, but I do uh, but I do like to go watch them because they're fucking, because I fucking live here. That's what's funny when you move somewhere and people are like, you're not a fan of them, are you? You're like, I live here. I right. like to go to the fucking game. I don't get, I get to see the Bears here once every millennial. Right. It's like, no, I don't fuck millennium. No, I don't get, I, I, I'll try to support local teams. But, um, but no, you still hold on to what you love. You're still gonna love, you know what I mean? Like you're still gonna love. You're not gonna switch yeah. and get rid of them. But I, um, yeah, I, I fucking, uh, if I meet like, you know, look, Favre is phenomenal. But I hate the Packers more. I've grew up loathing these people. Yeah. So I would still be like, yo, you're insanely good. I also hate your fucking. I fucking hate you so much. <laughs> I hate them. I think, I, I think I, they would almost appreciate. Oh, that. they would. Well, because they know, especially if I said I'm a Bears fan, they'd be like, oh shit, yeah, because we stomp your ass for fucking twenty years straight. That's yeah. a miserable relationship. Now it's, now it's even worse. I mean, Rogers is just. Yeah, yeah. I think he's got like nineteen straight. Yeah, it's disgusting. I think uh, we won five of the last like thirty meetings. Okay, or some bullshit. Yeah. It's really sad, but what you know, life goes on. It's, you know, I've I've had to get to the point where I'm not as emotionally attached as I used to be. You just can't. I mean, you can't anymore. You can't do that to you. Like, I'm grown. I mean, when I was a kid, it was it was easy to, you know, but I'm I'm grown now, and I just can't have my whole day ruined mm. because some other dudes are bad at their job. Right. <laughs> Not even bad. They fucked up the thing at their job. That's it. They just had an accident at work. Yeah. That's just, all it is. I had to stop doing I mean, the, the, the Washington football team, they're the most mismanaged organization probably in all of, no, not in all of sports, the Knicks are worse. Yeah. But other than the Knicks, who's worse? Who's more mismanaged than, than, the, than the Skins? I mean, I, I the, Bears? the Bears are really miserable. Yeah. But it, but is it ownership? Yes, it is. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The McCaskies got it under their thumb. It's really pathetic. Um, and I love you, Chicago. I love you, Bears. But goddamn, bro, what did you do to me all year long? It's the same thing where we're like excited at the beginning and then you're like, oh, no. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! And it keeps tumbling down. Yo, when you said that, it, you made it, you struck a chord, and I forgot to come back to it. But when you said you got the check from Netflix, did you for a moment think you wanted to spend it on something like rude, like stupid? Did you want to do some dumb shit with it? Well, before it, before I got it, I did. Yeah. What did you think you wanted to do with it? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 if I if it, if money was like if it was just. If it was way bigger, I, I would have definitely went and got a nice car. Like you sat in bed, did you not sit in bed and think I'm gonna have some fucking fun with this? Money? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But but that but but you know I don't know why, but in my dumbass mind, I didn't count like taxes and La yeah, agents, all, lawyers, or, right, all that right. shit. And then, so it wasn't. By the time I got the check, it wasn't the amount that yeah, that was in the not. contract. So I was, you know, so I was like, so when I got the check, I was like, okay, well, we're not doing any of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's keep our life the same for a little while. You, you know? Call, you call Nobu Malibu. You're like, I want to cancel the reservation. <clears throat> right. Um, I'll be back. I will be out there, but and not then, right now. <laughs> right. And they have my friends are like, Bitcoin. I'm like, man, leave me the fuck alone. No, don't throw away your money that fast. Nah. Get it. I've, I've dabbled in crypto fine for sure, but when people put a ton of money, I'm always like, ooh, that's so sketchy. I know people that have put all their money. It really? Yeah. Good God, I, don't, I just like. Do you have a thing that you uh, that you spend money on, even if you don't have it? That you, you know what I mean? Like, I talked to Glassman the other day. He was talking about you know he he's big into the card world. Like magic cards are worth oh. a fuckload of money. Yeah. Like there's some cards that are worth ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars, and if you tr you know trading and all that stuff, and he's like, I've been doing it. Even before I had money, I would trade at a lower level. Then when I got a little bit of money, I traded at a higher level. And I was like, that's wild. Or does that's... he even play the game? I don't think so anymore. I don't even know. Oh. I mean, I, I don't know the semantics of it. But, like, I think that's part of the world is knowing the things. And See, I, 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 don't, I don't know. It's not nothing that, I, that makes money, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm big in the gadgets. Like like tech shit. Yeah, tech. Yes. Yeah, like that's I expensive. Want... That's I mean, it's that's expensive habit. You know, it's like my, my, like my dream TV is out there. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like. 
is like ninety thousand dollars. What? Yeah. What the fuck is that, bro? I I I hook you up after this. Like, okay, I got it. I, I don't want to tempt you, but yeah, it's 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 worth it. Maybe it's not worth it, but you know, there's a it's thing. It's worth it if you have it. Well, there's a thing called the rich tax, right? Where uh-huh. where it's like, even if they overcharged it, overcharged for it, like like an like an iPhone or something, it's probably still would reasonably sell for like, you know, ten grand. Uh-huh. But they know that if you're buying a ten thousand dollar TV, they can just hit you in the head and go, "Hey, it's ninety thousand dollars." You know? Yeah, and that t- that then that guy would go, "That's even more exclusive." Right. Right. That's what it. That's what they do. The exclusivity of all that stuff. It's like I never really realized we were talking about when sports teams take team planes. I was talking to my cousin about that today, and why certain teams have planes and others don't. You know, the Cowboys have a plane, and the ja- Jaguars apparently have an insane plane, and most other teams just take a licensed uh, uh, lease commercial jet right it's just their whole jet okay. they don't own it united owns it or delta and i was like i wonder what that even costs what do you know how much it costs to buy like a 777 like I a boeing no i take a wild guess i'm gonna say 15 million 400 million dollars let's get the fuck out of here i'm like you dude i guessed 100 i get i guessed 80 i think i said to him 60 to 80 million 400 million to, million to own one yeah if you want to buy a boeing 777 it's 400 around 400 million dollars and <laughs> and that's not that don't include the pilot bro that's the, not that's no main. that's no paint <laughs> that's no custom that's that's the plane that's, that's when you buy the plane <laughs> fuck <laughs> yeah dude 400 million fuck it out so because we were talking about it, i was like the 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 idea of a private jet to me is just so wild but i was like there's people that buy commercial size airlines as a private company jet 400 million dollars but i bet if you did if you sat and did the math i mean a football team knows we're flying x amount of times a year right yeah, look i'm sure it's financially still a little irresponsible oh yeah, yeah. but but also a decade? Uh. but who cares who cares because if you're a billionaire who owns those teams again when we talked about the beginning of this what's how, is there too much money or whatever when you have so much it would be foolish to not spend as much as you can because you'll never run out. So what what are you going to do? Yeah. Not fuck off with it? That's what those things are for. That's what the $90,000 TV is for. It's for, pe- it's for people that like have to spend it. That it's like, well, you know, I made yeah. two, I had $2 billion this year. Next year, I'll have 2.4 because I made that yeah. much money. Like, what is Bezos buying? Yeah, what does he, what do you go, what does he go when he goes shopping? Yeah, like, like we saw her, like what do you get him for a Christmas gift? I find it that the more money I've ever made in my career, and by no means am I like rolling in money, but like the more money that I've made, the less stuff I buy. And ironically, maybe the cheaper shit I buy. Like I thought I would start buying more expensive stuff once I started to get a couple of checks. Like I would buy nice, really nice clothes or really nice. And I I went the opposite. Me too. I find myself buying cheaper shit. Cause you're scared, this was free. You're scared to you're scared to be that guy that over that spent all this fuck. You know because yeah. because there's there's an amount of money that poor people think is rich. Yes, that people that have it know that it isn't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you're ri- you're rich. Like a, a year ago, you were rich to me. Yeah. And now I know better. Now I'm right. like, oh, we're you know you're you're doing well. You, you know, yeah. but but it ain't. You don't just have money to be like going out and buying diamond chains. No, that's insane. You know, yeah, no. you got like whiskey ginger encrusted in, in, in gold. You know what I mean? You diamonds. don't have that kind of money. And, no, and when people do that, I always get scared. I'm like, how do they get, where does that come from? Yeah. Well, I see rappers like, it's like, how, like you are, you, there's no way you can afford that. No, you know they can't. No. You know, you know they can't. And then you learn that a lot of times those cars are on loan from a dealer. You know what I mean? They've got four loaned cars, but they just want to have the rela- their dealer wants to have the relationship because they want to feel cool. And then diamond jewelers will loan out chains. You know what I mean? It's that's nuts to me because it's all this illusion. And then when you learn the truth is anybody who did buy that is crazy. Yeah. You, you spend 180 grand on a fucking on a necklace. In here, we pour whiskey. Hey, everybody gets these free trials and they just renew without your consent. And I got to tell you, it's frustrating when you get the email and you're like, we charge you another 80 bucks this year. And you're like, what What was that? I don't even know what I signed up for. Um, it's a business scam uh, and uh, I don't like it. You know, don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download True Bill to take control of your subscriptions. True Bill. 
is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. This is huge because I know you got a lot of subs on there. You're like, I can't believe I signed up for Disney Plus and Apple TV and Hulu and YouTube TV and, and ESPN Plus. We've all been doing this. And I got to tell you, on average, uh, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. That's a lot of money in your pocket because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. Simple, pimple. True Bill Concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. They got over 2 million users and helped them save over $100 million. Uh, Matthew B., you know this guy? He says, in a matter of seconds, I saved, I saved $600 on the year on my direct TV bill. Saved $120 for the year on my Sirius XM. Saved $840 a year on my car insurance. True Bill has it all right there. We're all getting bit by these subscription services because they're piling up. Used to just be a couple of uh, channels on network television. That was the million cable outs, and they all have digital outlets. So do yourself a favor and don't get scammed, okay? Because I've been doing this. I was paying for five different apps I didn't know about. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash whiskey. Truebill.com slash whiskey. Right now, truebill.com slash whiskey could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash whiskey. Ginger. I like gingers. Because I know... I know that in the entertainment industry, no matter what you're fucking doing, rapping, singing, comedy, act, there is you are not making you, you are never making the most money off what you're doing. <laughs> right. No there's, chance. There's someone way richer than you because they're making the most money off what 50 people are doing. Right. And so you definitely don't have diamond encrusted you know ruby encrusted <laughs> chain money that's like uh when someone always says you know like my dad's generation will always be like hey guys these athletes they're paying them way too much fucking money i'm like the guy that writes the checks has all of the money way more money. wait i mean it's not even like lebron's contracts you know when someone's like oh lebron got a billion dollars from nike it's like nike gets a trillion dollars yeah yeah <laughs> it, it that's that's the shittiest argument people go these athletes all me and first of all only the LeBrons and like the the top twenty percent are millionaires. Are 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 multi 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 millionaires. Right, right, yeah, right. yeah. The other guys are making a good chunk of money. Someone may come through a couple million, and then they may never play again. Right. That's it. Well, the average with the average NFL career is like four years or three yeah, and a half years. Yeah, four, three and a half or four years. Yeah. Yeah, it's like in the the minimum salary isn't a million dollars. No. It's like no. four hundred thousand or something. And let's say that comes and goes real fast, and you've spent a lot of that getting diamond encrusted chains and yeah. taking private jets and all that shit. When they're done and they're broke, it's maybe the saddest thing I've ever seen. Well, yeah, but the thing is, I don't feel bad for you no more. They have a they <laughs> they have a thirty for thirty, right? Where yeah. it, there's literally greats yeah. telling you not to do that shit. <laughs> right. They have these rookie symposiums yeah. where they bring in people that have been fleeced. Right. They bring in fleecers. They brought in Brittany Renner to talk to athletes about how not to get got by gold diggers. Because she, what did she got knocked up by who? Who did she? DJ Washington. Yeah, got him. Got him. Got him. Yeah. <laughs> and she'd been making videos about about how to get athletes. <laughs> you know, that yeah. is a great tutorial though. Yeah. That gold trap one hundred and one. I mean, like... the whole queen coming and telling you the, the tricks. I mean, what, what, <laughs> and you still fall for it. Yeah, man, because honestly, the power is strong. <laughs> when you're young and you have money and you're talented like those dudes are, I'm sure that the vices are unbelievably simple and tough to say no to. I mean, it's everywhere. It's money, drugs, women, partying. It's freedom. It's love. It's power. Walk into any room. Do whatever you want. I mean, to control that at such a young age. It's tough. It's that's got to be so hard to be twenty six and worth all that money and do whatever. That's why I let I let Justin Bieber in that type slide because like, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking, I would be dead if if I had, if I dead. had if I had ten twenty thirty billion dollars when I was eighteen. Well, he was actually like fourteen. He got. I think he got really famous at sixteen, fifteen or sixteen yeah, is when he like, like blew up. I would be dead. I yeah. would have died for sure. Yeah, they were like he egged a neighbor's house. I was like, if I was rich at sixteen, I would have I would have fucking rocket launched a neighbor's right. house. Right. I mean, I I was doing that when I didn't have anything. No shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no shit. Oh, what did he do? Oh, he drove a car fast through the neighborhood. Like, yeah. what? An I think asshole. your neighbors are just pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah. I think you just suck. Yeah, you supposed to go out the window and go live it up, kid. Yeah. You know, do donuts, <laughs> spin it out. Yeah, it's like some billionaire up the street is like, well, I didn't get to do. I didn't get to drive my Ferrari fast till I was 49. Those are just rich guys that are mad that they made their money so late in life. That's all it is, right? Well, that's usually when it happens, right? Most, yeah. So then they see youth get money and they're bummed about it. It's like, you, it's the same as you. He's made money like you did. He found a success story, a way to get money, a way to like be successful and talented and do his right. thing. That's what you did. You just did it late. 
You can't be mad at the young dude that got it before you got it. I actually feel sorry for the young people that get rich, man, because it you you there's a perspective that you will never have. Mm-hmm. You'll never know how to be a regular person. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah, you and well, you also and you can't go backwards because the fall from rich, if you're very, you know, what's that kid, Aaron Carter, or what's the, uh, uh, yeah, Aaron, Aaron Carter, Carter, I think, yeah, the singer guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had that like great, uh, you know, he's it's like a, such a sad tale. It's like a young wasn't he, superstar. Was he like the pre Bieber, like before Bieber? Yeah, he was like the white kid that everyone was like, oh my god. Yeah, and he just it's like now he falls down this rabbit hole. They foreclosed on his house, and you're like, that is the worst. When he made all the money as a kid, and then you become a grown man, and it's all <laughs> goes away because you're like, yeah. That's the fear. Making money too young like that, to me, is so scary. And it, it, your parents got to be, you got to have you gotta have the right kind of parents. Wow, and they never do. Yeah. People who make it really young, it's hard to have a good set of parents because what, you know, they're obviously aiding and abetting in your self-indulgent chaos of whatever's making you that kind of money. You know, like YouTube stars and all those young kids. Nothing healthy about that at a young age no. to make all that money. So obviously the parents are enabling the behavior or enabling all that stuff they're buying them the cameras they're buying them the laptops to edit the videos and to go out there and do a prank in public and they're bailing them out you know what i mean yeah. someone's helping you out well fame is a drug and like you're letting your kids microdose. you know what right. i mean right it's like they're not even getting the full like I, I read somewhere recently that um like the top the top 0.1 percent of twitch streamers actually do it for a living only one percent. It's a point one percent. Holy shit! So everyone else is they they're doing it thinking because it's no different. It's just like saying you're gonna be an athlete or be a musician. Sure, sure. It's like it's so hard to get the audience to make enough money where that's all you do. Damn. And a lot of them want to do it, you know. And I, it's and the, the number's probably bigger for YouTube. Mm-hmm. But but still. Yeah. Are you on that shit? Do you do that Twitch and all that? I'm about to start. I'm so unfamiliar with it. I gain enough. What work. do you play? I play like shooters, you know. First person games. Yeah, I play RPGs. Right, like um, what's the most popular one that I can't even think of? Not Call of, Call of Duty. Duty. Yeah, Call, Call of Duty. Duty is probably one of the most popular games, or Apex Legends. Or... You love all that shit. No, I don't love it. Well, no, um, what do what do you go? What's your go to then? I play Overwatch. That's, oh, that's a, a, dude! Team. I told Bobby I used to jerk off to some of that porn. <laughs> they do yeah. Overwatch porn. I know they do anything porn. But it popped up on my feed. I was like an animated porn, and I was like, I don't know, a Simpsons porn. I want to look at it. Yeah, no, the Simpsons porn I can't fuck with. No, why? What's the oh, difference? Ch- a childhood connection. <laughs> Overwatch has nothing for me. It's just it looks like sexy animated figures. Yeah, it was hot. I kind of liked it. I was like, oh, this is kind of dope. Yeah, the fake shit's cool. Yeah, because it's it's kind of nice knowing that nothing is real. That no one can get hurt. No one's getting emotionally abused. There is no like the that that alien getting fucked by five tentacles doesn't have daddy issues. Right. And someone well, there's someone doing the voiceover. Right. Well, they do. Yeah, but it's probably like one dude doing it all. Yeah. All the voices. <laughs> yeah. As one dude who has a high pitched enough voice, he'd be like, Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That is true. There probably is one dude doing all the voices for that Ryan shit. Ryan and Tracer. Yeah. <laughs> to Overwatch is the game for you then. It is it, because the games I play the most aren't necessarily the games I like the most, but but they're the games where I can relax. You know, like Yeah. It's it's an it's an it's competition, but it doesn't I don't get emotionally tilted one way or the other. I don't get tilted with Overwatch. Do you play with other people or you play solo? No, you gotta play with other people. You have to, right? Yeah. You can't do any of that stuff alone. You, well, you can... Because I loved... So when I used to game years ago, and I don't anytime soon, anytime now, but um, I like the solo shit. No, me too. That's then I, I would I, get high I, and just disappear. I play the RPG joints. And that's by yourself. That's by yourself, yeah. Well, you oh, you can be a wizard or a barbarian or something. Mm-hmm. You, you know, and I like... I like there's a... There's a I, get what, I forget what they call it, but there's like... A, there's, a, there's a power fantasy mixed with a... Um, with a progression system that like it reward it, it fuck it's a it's a psychological thing. In fact, look, I just did a um I just did a thing for Netflix as a joke radio, me and me and Griffin. Mm-hmm. And well he wasn't around for this, but after I got finished playing with him, I talked to two I talked to one of the the, the top like Twitch voices and she's like a G four host, mm-hmm. which is a gaming channel. Yeah. And I talked to two doctors of gaming. Two professors of game of where they study their doctorate in gaming. No, no. It, oh, it's, I was like, it, one was a was a 
was a professor of psych- psychology, but but he but he wrote two books on the psychology of gamers. Wow. And the other one was a professor of informatics. With I don't know exactly what the fuck that means, but she imagine it's how we receive and share yeah, data. But her whole family games. Her, her husband, her kids. Oh, it's like oh, it's a family affair. It's a family affair, and I, and we and we got into like we just got into like what what addicts you, what you know how workplaces should be set up kind of like game because like Call of Duty. The reason it's so popular is because you know you log into the game, you get experience. You play one game, you unlock some shit, and it's not a big thing. Right. Okay. And then you play one more game. It's like, oh, you did good. You unlock two things, and there's and and, they, and there's thousands of things. Right. So you're constantly being rewarded for your work, huh. even in the slightest way. Even if it's just like, oh, you get a red glove instead of a black glove, or you're like, fuck yes, and yeah, yeah. Pe- and and it's to the point where like people will spend money on costume items and stuff like that. And, Bobby. And they yeah, and they give you they give you just enough drip of like reward, the dopamine fix, and so you can't stop. Yeah. Yeah, Did you I, get hooked. I love it. I don't not 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 call it necessarily, but like Diablo. Yeah, I get down. I get into it. You feel addicted to it a little bit. Like if you don't play after. Oh no no no! Not like that. There no, but that that's not true. There are some games that can suck you in. Where you where where like you find like I find myself thinking about them when I'm when I'm not around. <laughs> that's fucking wild. Yeah. I never had that atta- attachment to it. I mean, I love like you know. Look, there's Super Nintendos right there. We got. We have oh, wow. we have sixty four downstairs. Why is it that color? Because that's old and sun beaten. It uh, sat in the okay. sun somewhere. Yeah. You you but you do know like it's almost like um, have you ever been like missing the game, like a like a sports game, like your team playing no. and you're like, dude, I'm, I got I got to fucking watch the game. I mean, maybe in my co- maybe college years, but like oh. I got older and I just didn't give a fuck anymore about. It. I just was like, I'll watch it if I get like today's Sunday. But imagine, if I don't get, if I don't see stuff, I don't see stuff. What about what about stage time? Yeah. Oh my god. You go too long without some stage time. And yeah. You're like I gotta fucking. Go. Yeah. Itch. Yeah. No, that is totally different. It's that it's, but it's not. It's, it, the only this, the only thing, the only difference is that our generation, there's shame involved because gaming wasn't profitable. Mm-hmm. Now you can be a millionaire. Be, R- multi million. I mean, some of those guys are making so much fucking money. What's the number one dude? What's his name? The guy that I know. Ninja. A, Ninja. Right. And he's. What is that? Fifty million, a hundred million? Yeah, million? he's he's rich, rich, rich. Yeah. Like rich, rich. Yeah, and, it's, and that's and, all from gaming. And here's the thing, too. He's not. I don't even think he's a pro. What do you mean? Like, you like have to, how do you like, register to be a professional? Like the top Twitch people, a lot of them like used to be pros, but you, but you know, like you got to retire from that shit when you're like seventeen. <laughs> yeah, you get in at twelve. Is that what it is? Yeah, because I I read that five like, years in the league and you're out. That like you, it's something elasticity, but it's like the 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 speed at which electrical signals oh. go through your nerves, you just lose them. The twitch function leaves, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, the top guys, you know, they they turn fifteen or sixteen and they start losing it, but they still know enough about the game. It's almost like like a, like an old linebacker that's like I'm smart enough to make up for the fact that I'm not fast anymore. Right. And but then that only lasts a couple of years, where it's like, yo, these new dudes are smoking you. You need to move. That's wild. But but they can still get on Twitch and they're, and they're they're better than us. You of know, course, of course, it's yeah, just, of course. It's, it's just like how you saw um who the fuck was it? Who was the old white point guard for the uh, Steve Nash? Uh-huh. Like you you see you could go on YouTube and like Steve Nash in a suit. Now Steve Nash retired because of injuries. Yeah, but he's on a court in a suit. Fifteen years shitting later, on smoking people. these kids. <laughs> just shitting on. Yeah, or you see these, or you see some 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 G League uh or some some NBA player that's like not even good enough to be in the G League. Mm-hmm. But he, but and and so these the guys that ball every day at the rec center think they can fuck with him, and he's out there playing with them. Yeah, it's like there, it's levels to the shit. There, well, uh, there. I mean, truly, and only to see that in person can you believe it. Because when people talk shit, you know, Brian Scalabrini, people, he did a thing online because people were like, "Fucking Scalabrini, I'll shit on that dude, the Red Mamba." Yeah, oh and yeah, he, that and guy. He fucking lit that dude up. It was embarrassing. Yeah. He's like, you think you're going to score one point maybe? He was talking shit and everything. And it was so soft, so smooth. I mean, everything, everything. Every- and when you see it, li- only when you get to see it, when somebody does that, do you get to appreciate it. Baron yeah. Davis used to have a used to have a league that he'd play. Why can't I think of the name? On the west side. But I went to the gym a few times and watched those guys play. It's, it, it's insane. It, yeah. I mean, it feels like an NBA game. You're like, this is just like what an NBA game looks like. That's how talented these dudes were. But they were nowhere near being in the league. Well, that's what I, that's what Red Mama said to that guy. He was like, "I, you are as far away from me as I am from LeBron." <laughs> right, right. I was like, "Man, that's some cold shit to say to a motherfucker after you beat him." But it's like, yeah, come to reality. Because like yeah. I remember being in the back, at, um, 
in the back of the comedy store one time, you know, everybody, everybody's smoking shit. Yeah. And I was watching the Overwatch championships on my on your phone. And people start giving me shit because, you know, comics get invested in like trying to act cool and shit. Like, yeah. what are you doing watching video games? Like, yo, this is this is the championship. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Like, yo, it because they, they really think that because they also have an Xbox that like they aren't that far. And I'm like, no, no, no. You don't understand. This fucking 13 year old Korean kid <laughs> will smoke your whole family <laughs> by himself at once. He'll, he'll switch. Bro, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it. Some of these dudes get on here and because it, it, Overwatch is six v six, but some of these dudes will get on there and they'll play. They'll play one versus six scrubs and just and it's like it's nothing. That's fucking wild to me. Yeah, imagine that six people like one on six in anything. You know, like it's like if six dudes jumped on Tyson Fury, you would fuck him up for sure. Um, you know, and obviously video games is d- chill. <laughs> right, I'm just, I'm, I'm just Whoop. right. Yeah. I haven't thought about the perfect analogy, but <laughs> but six six on one, one in anything. That's a good statement, though. Six on one in yeah. anything is almost impossible to beat. Because I used to be good. I used to be that good at Madden. You know what I mean? You were like that. Yeah, and I remember, <laughs> I remember going going with my homie to. I didn't realize we were like hanging out with the dope boys or whatever, you mm-hmm. know. And we and we're at the house and they playing Madden. Like, you want to get on the sticks? I'm like, I don't know. They're like, oh, I'm gonna. They were talking shit, and they didn't realize like I was good. Like, I had I played like thousands of games online. Right, they per, thought F, you F, were just F, some F, dude that sometimes right, right, plays. Right. Yeah. And I'm sitting, there, you know, what I'm saying my footwork in the pocket, and I'm sitting there smoking them with the. And this is this. I, I always use the Redskins. And you I, always play the skins? I always play with the skins. Damn, you're loyal. And and to a fault, by but the I, way. But I was like, well, I just I would just learn how to be how to play with them. And I was smoking these cats. And it was to the point where like <laughs> I realized like you can't just do that. You know what I mean? In somebody else's house. Right, no. No. It, it creates a conflict. Exactly. Nobody wants to get so, high with you yes, now. I had to take my foot off the gas a little bit. You're like, well, yeah, just, anybody want to smoke? And they're like, not with your fucking ass. <laughs> Go sit right. outside. Well, I just know I wasn't invited to the next get together. <laughs> yeah, you know that's I mean? it. Yeah, you can't beat them at their own game right away. No. You have to ease into it. But that's that's miserable. But, you don't want to lose. But I love that though. I love to make a motherfucker go because this is this is this is the first thing motherfuckers always do. They always go, "Well, if I had all day to sit in the house and, and play, practice, I'm like, yeah, no fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bitch. Don't talk shit to the dude that sits in the house all day and practice. <laughs> You're not that guy though. I don't think you spend all day. No, no not any, not anymore. But at one point, oh you did. yeah. But I used to be real serious about it. When you said at the beginning, when you said. Uh, You've always had roommates. Are you now no longer? Are you are you moving out? Now that you're getting, now you're making money. Are you gone? After after this, not, I'm not gone yet. I'm gone up here. Yeah, you're gone. I'm gone. Yeah, I and just, it, it, it ain't got nothing to do with the people I live with. No, I no, no. It's a, you want to move out, move up. Move yeah, on. I gotta let my nuts hang, man. Yeah, it's your. You want your own spot. Yeah, I want my own spot where like where my scent is on everything, <laughs> and you nobody know? questions any of your moves. Well, I just don't want to have to think about what another. Cause, Cause, I'm a thoughtful person. At least I try to be. You are. I don't, don't want to have to think about what another motherfucker got going on. Like, yeah. Oh, is it okay if I make noise right now? Do we do we got a do we got a sneak fuck <laughs> in my own house? I got a I got a quiet fuck. Do you like have to a, do that when you bring someone home. You have to sneak fuck around. I don't. Yeah. No. <laughs> do they? No, but I have the master bedroom, so I. Oh, you know, so that's I got, that. I got all kind of tactics. I have a, I have a loud fan, like an air mover. <laughs> You have, you, know I mean? you have certain things set up that you need to take care of prior yeah, to the, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, hey, Google, put on some slow jams. But it plays, you know, I figured <laughs> it, it kicks out. kicks on the fan. It's a Rube Goldberg that <laughs> turns on all the things to right. make sure it's fuck ready. Oh, this is fuck ready, baby. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, don't even trip. Where would you, would you stay, would you go back? Would you go back to the East Coast at some point or would Hell you stay here? No, no. This is it forever. I just can't do the cold, man. And D.C. is not, uh, that's not it. No, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Like I love, you know what it is. Like I love the culture. I love my yeah. people. I love the food, and like and like and and, and sometimes like and I because I could, I could recognize a DC accent like that. You knew right away. I, I, oh yeah, I know. When I hear somebody, it's certain words that because even my I've lost mine a little bit, but it's certain words when I hear motherfuckers say it, I go, "You from DC?" I could just know, and it's like it's like music to my ears, like to hear that people talking like that. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. That's so funny you it's, say that. Is it like a just a twang, like an underneath something underneath words? Cer- what certain words give it away? Well, like well, I mean, it's, well, it's certain words if you say them that'll give it away. But I'm just talking about how you talk. Mm. You know, it's like when you hear somebody, you know, they're from Philly. Yeah, 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 Philly, right. yeah, right. house or and, home. And some of it is like you know, Oogie. you know, like if I hear somebody call you a Bama, or a what? 
a Bama. What the fuck is a Bama? It's it's whatever. It's like um. It's negative. No, it's just a way. It's just a. It's a good. It's just a garnish on top of shit talking. It's like, uh, like if I call you a Bama, it just means like a lame. Oh uh, yeah, so it is negative. Yeah, that's yeah. a connotation. Oh yeah, it's negative for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's never yeah. good. Oh, you said no. Yeah. I was like, what? Well, but but that's old people too. But but it's just the way people talk. I could just tell, and I love it. Yeah. But. Go, but going back there, I just can't do the code. That's why I left in the first place. And now I've been out here for so long. It's like, like how it is now. Well, oh, not not right now, but how it gets at night. Oh yeah, I can't, I can't. I'm like, I oh, fuck this. <laughs> this is not the LA I'm paying for. You know. <laughs> well, go to you got to go to Florida then, man. Florida's the only place that doesn't get that cold in the United States. Yeah, but they crazy down there. Yeah, they're wild as shit. It's yeah, fun yeah. though. It's fun wild. I do it. I mean, maybe maybe I could live. Arizona doesn't get that bad. I mean, it does get desert, does get cold at night. But if Texas, certain parts of Texas don't get that bad, yeah, but just stick to the South, man. Yeah, I mean, I might do, I might do, I could do Arizona. I love Arizona. I have this weird affinity for Arizona. I've, I've, I've always have. Yeah. Oh, I've always have, and I'm in Arizona right now, by the way. Yeah. When my, this is out, <laughs> one of my closest friends that I serve with is an Arizona guy. I love it. There's a weird thing. I love, my wife doesn't like it, but I, I, I love, and she doesn't. I think somebody once said to me because I went to school out there, and somebody once said to me. You don't miss the place, you just miss the time, which is probably true for most mm. things. You don't really miss the, but when somebody goes, man, I miss that fucking place. It's like, mm, you miss the time that you were spending in whatever place that was, whether it was a restaurant right. or your favorite bar or your buddy's old apartment. You miss that moment in time. And the circumstances. Correct, yeah. Well, it had nothing to do with the fucking building or the, or the physical place itself. Didn't really do it for you. It was just all those elements taking place were what you were in love with. And uh, that, but, I do go back to Arizona, but I still get, I still do get pieces of me that go, no, I do love this fucking place. It feels a type of way I can't describe. And also, I think when you reminiscing sometimes, you forget that like when you're young, you don't need comfort. Mm -mm. You you could you could, you know you could sleep on a brick slab and be and be fine. I did. I slept you know? on a lazy boy for three months. Yeah, but now th that's what I'm gonna buy. A lazy boy? I'm, no, I'm gonna buy a nice ass mattress, like the nicest fucking mattress. Right. Well, that's worth it. That's your life. That's worth every. Because I've I've upgraded it already recently, mm -hmm. but not the one I wanted. Not the one like. What's the, the one you want? You already know the mattress. You I want? already know the mattress I want. What it's, is it? It's it's it's. I I don't know the name off the top of my head, but it's it's expensive. How much? Just tell me. It's like. <laughs> Come on, don't be ashamed. It's like six grand. Holy shit. Yeah. For a fucking mattress? For a mattress. God damn. Because listen, the mattress I have for- That's a nice fucking mattress. You, ni you know you can get a, r a nice one for a couple grand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a really nice one. A really nice one. But, but you want the nicest of the nice ones. Yeah, and it's like it's, it's lifetime. So, it, you, you know- get, for the, you, you have it for the rest of your life? For that, no, but for that extra four grand, they replace it. They'll replace it whenever Oh, you want. okay. Well, then I guess that may be. If for six yeah. grand, that seems okay. If you get, if you can keep getting new ones. Yeah, well, because you got to get a new one every 10 years. Yeah, do you though? Well, that's, what, but maybe that's mattress. My parents have been mattress sleeping mattress on the same. Propaganda. Yeah, it is. It sounds like propaganda. My parents have had the same fucking bullshit mattress in their house forever. And only recently did they get guilted into buying new ones. You know what I mean? And, they, they, and they, didn't, they didn't go, oh, you were right. I miss the old ones. Is that what they said? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. But I did too when I went back to the house. I was like, oh, this new mattress fucking sucks. Nah, man. I know mattresses that are soft are bad for your back, but we're going to die anyway. Is that true? Yeah, you're supposed to have a firmer mattress. It's better for your back. As you get older? Yeah. Really, really soft is bad for you. Uh, curvature in your spine. Oh, uh, okay. No, I don't know. I, don't, I just thought like, I, I've been sleeping on what was basically, like I didn't even realize it. It was This was my struggle mattress. Mm -hmm. And, and- Somebody spent the night one night, and then and the next day was like, "You, you need a new mattress." And I'm like, "Well, you're the only person that's ever said that. Get the fuck out of here." <laughs> and <laughs> you have people come over yeah. take it, take a quiz. And you're then, like, then "Should I, I get a new mattress?" Yes or no? Well, then I ran into an ex, mm. and you know somehow the conversation came up, and I was like, "Is it? Is this some shit wrong with my mattress?" And she was like. Yes, oh, your mattress man. feels like like a like a like a like a sack of clothes that you plan on donating or whatever. Like, what? <laughs> God damn, that's so deep. Yeah, what and, a hard cut. Yeah, and I find, and I finally got a new one, and I was like, oh shit, what the fuck have I been doing? Yeah, it, it, a nice one does make a big big difference. Just just a nicer one, because the one the new one I got was only like a couple hundred bucks. It wasn't like yeah, no, yeah. it was like seven hundred bucks, but it wasn't like the thousand dollar one. Yeah, no, but it, honestly, th it does make a big difference. When you go, I mean, I remember when I first moved out here, I had, you know, whatever Sealy's cheapest was at the time, and I threw it on the floor, on the box spring on the floor. I wasn't going to get a fucking bed frame by any stretch of the imagination. I put it on the, I had box springs on 
the floor for the first five years I was out here, I think. Did, was that before or after you met your wife? Way before. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, she no, gonna no. make you. She's going to make you get Yeah, it. women will make you get a thing. Yeah, you have to get a thing. But when you're a young man, yeah, and by know. the way, even still, that that never deters women from seeing a box spring on the floor when you're young. Oh, hell no. They don't give a fuck. Hell no. Well, I, I, yeah, I had to learn that lesson where it's like, oh, no. Is she really like you? She'll fucking clean up. For, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. she'll build a, a, a build a bed frame for you. She, you come home, she's like, "I got it. Don't worry about it. We, I don't want to fuck on the floor anymore." That's the, but those. I think those struggles are are uh, necessary. Yeah, they they must be. I guess I don't I don't know. See, I, but when you're young, Justin Bieber, you don't have those. Right, never existed. No, never had to go through those kind of things. So you really can't relate to that shit. No, when people talk about it, there's no like. When you said you were poor your whole life, were you you weren't poor as a kid. Were you poor as a kid too? Yeah, I was a false kid. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, were you, you really? Didn't? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I lit. You know, I wasn't always in a place of like abject poverty, but the wealth wasn't mine. It was like you know, I would go into a nicer homes. You know, mm -hmm. like a nice middle class home or something. How many did you skip around to? <sighs> well, including family. I probably moved like fourteen or fifteen times. Get the fuck out! Yeah, before I, before high school, before I left high school. Yeah, yeah, because I would go back and forth between family members and boom, and I was you know, and then back and forth between homes and you know. God damn! Yeah, man. What do you call home in your head then? Um, ah, I, I don't, I don't know. There is none, right? Not really. I mean, I'm. I'm are there I'm, people that are home to you? Right. Yeah. 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 That's, I think that's what it is. There's people that are home to you. Yeah. I mean, people ask me where I'm from. I say, you know, D.C. D.C. Yeah. County, Maryland. Yeah. But that it doesn't feel like home when I go there, except the food. The food. Because that's what, the thing is, with all the things that were consistent, mm -hmm. it feels like home to me. So, you know, the food, the music, the culture. People, the culture. Right. Yeah. But I don't feel at home when I'm there. I'm like, because, you know, sometimes people will go. You know, I'll be reminiscing with my mom or something, and she'll be like, you know the place, you know, right up there off Benning Road? I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> There's no that bearing oh, for you. Nope. No? <laughs> or I mean, motherfuckers, this is, this is the weirdest part about moving around so much, is there's people that will remember you, mm. but I don't remember them. I mean, if like that's my whole adult life, I feel like. Yeah, where, where it's like, you know, the, I was in school with them for one year or six months, and they, right. they remember me, and I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I You I moved on so fast. <laughs> well, you didn't have a choice. Yeah. Is that... Did you think as a kid you always had to keep that mentality in order to not get fucked up mentally by it? Yeah, I just, I learned, I learned how to have levels of closeness, where it's like, I let you get this close, and that's as close as we're going to get, so if I got to forget about you, then I, I can move the fuck on. You know? mm. Does I'll... that hinder relationships? It does, yeah. It's, it fucks me up to this day. What about with, with women, not just friends? Oh, absolutely. Worse with women than with friends? Yes. Yeah, way worse. Because, when, because well, I, I, it used to not be that big of a deal, mm. but now that I'm, you know, my late 30s, like women my age, they they not trying to wait around for you to like. No, <laughs> you, you, dude, they are not fucking around. <laughs> right, right. So they're like, what's the problem? I'm like, look, this is as much as you're going to get, you know, mm -hmm. for now, you know. So, until, you, until you're ready. And that might be never. Yeah, and that's fine too. Because I'm good. It's like I don't feel like I'm missing out on something. I I, I am 100 percent positive that I am not a normal person with like normal interactions. But I have, you know, I have real friends. I'm I'm like I'm more likely to get close to to a friend than than intimacy with close to a woman. Mm. You know what I mean? But is that because is that something you think you want to conquer at some point, or you don't give a fuck? You know, it might be like the mattress. Where it's like, I, maybe I just don't know what I'm missing. But I don't feel like it's something that I... Need. Are you willing to try a new mattress or no? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm working on it. You know, I got <laughs> therapy and shit and medication <laughs> and shit. But, I mean, if it don't work out, I got what I want. I'm good at comedy. That's all. Like, I promised myself that. Like, this is all I want. Yeah. But now that I have that, you know... That's my point. Yeah. Now that you have it, then what? It goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Yeah. How much is too much and when is enough and... I, there, the old phrase is there is no end to up, and that represents everything. There's oh, no end shit. to up. Did you talk to my mom before I came mm -hmm. here? <laughs> the same conversation. It's like, so when are you going to be like, all right, look. But it is true. There is no end to up. There's no way no. to be completely done, satisfied, checked out, complacent. Well, I don't believe there'll in There'll be that. no point to life. Right. So, you know, you'll find a new mattress. Yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs>
It feels so fucked up to call women mattresses. <laughs> I know. I know. The layers there are pretty that, good. That might be the worst <laughs> slur. Like, if we, if we started that, which we're not doing. No, we're not. We are not doing that. <laughs> Someone at home is like, I'm taking <laughs> yeah. it. Who's that new mattress you've been dating? Yeah. No, you know, but no, honestly. <laughs> Yes, and I don't mean in a derogatory way. We're using it as a sweet metaphor. It's definitely a metaphor, yeah. The worst thing I ever said to a girl, I'll never forget. Oh, no. Uh, it was in college. We were all, it was on my dorm hall. And she, this girl was so mean to me. Mean and how? Just a bully. Oh, okay. You know? But how does a girl bully you? Uh, she would just say cutting things like... um. Like you're ugly. Yeah, in that regard, like oh, that girl's right. not gonna fuck you, Santino. You, you, you know, like I'm sure she doesn't like redhead. You know, some shit like that. Oh wow, okay. some bullshit. Where like, as a comic, we take a million hits. Nothing really, but you can't really hurt my feelings. I mean that. You, my dad can hurt my feelings. Right. right. You know what I mean? Right. The people that you let in, the people yeah. that are in those. Uh, everyone else really can't hurt my feelings. Yeah. It's really hard for you to hurt my feelings. But she was. Be, she's just always an asshole. And she would just say bully as shit. That was always like, shut the fuck up. And one time she said some dumb shit. And she was a good looking girl. And I said, yeah, bitch, you're just a, you're, you're, there's nothing going on up here. You're just a baby machine in a nice package. And she like got weird and then cr was crying in her room. And by the way, I'm not proud of this. I'm giving you a moment of my life. <laughs> but she was so mean to me all the time. I'm proud of you though. <laughs> thank you and then she was bawling and i was like that hit you that hard and she's like i had to get a hysterectomy 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 is yeah. that correct because you couldn't now Your uterus no longer have children so when i said you're a baby machine there's nothing up here you're just a baby machine in a nice package so you were just calling her completely worthless yes i mean i sliced right to the center of her core oh. I, I had no idea I was just being an asshole back. I didn't know that she had. How would I? How could you know? She had a crush on you, huh? Mm, probably. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know that girl's not gonna fuck you, Santino. But up here, she's like, but I will. <laughs> but I remember how much that hurt her fucking feelings. It was just so brutal for some reason. That's also when you learn that being a comedian, you can be extremely cruel, like remarkably cruel. This whiskey's good as fuck, man. Fuck yeah. <laughs> this, this like, cause I, I, at first I, man, that, yeah, this is fucking. This might be my new shit right here. You like it? I love this shit. You take this one home, the front bu one. Buffalo, oh, for real? Yeah. Yeah, the big one's yours. They sponsor No, they don't. They don't sponsor us anymore. Oh, fuck them then. No, no, no. You know what? No, they're good people to us. We actually do love them. We <laughs> okay. love them. But it is good shit, isn't it? it is, yeah, man. It's smooth. It's a nice sipping whiskey. I shouldn't have mixed it with anything. It doesn't matter. I t I've said this before to friends on this show. I've also said this to people on here. The head distiller of that distillery, at Buffalo Trace, I went there, right? Uh, they make some of my favorite stuff. They make this, they make Eagle Rare, they make Blends, they make this one. Um, I'm a fan. Pappy. I'm a big fan of them, which is why I'm pissed they don't fuck with me anymore. But whatever. Uh, but I asked him, I said, how am I supposed to take my whiskey? I'm going to end this argument. Because some people are like, oh, you don't drink with ice. You don't drink it with a mixer. You know, people always have this. He said, how do you like it? I said, a couple of cubes of ice. And he said, then that's how you take it. I was like, isn't there a... There's got to be some old world whiskey rule book of what to do and not to do. He's like, I, nobody gives a fuck. He's like, no. that's a that's a social thing that some idiot made up in the streets at some shitty bar. You know what right. I mean? It's like my going, you have to eat your steak bloody. Why? I've seen people getting fights over that shit, dude. It's your food, right? You eat it however you want to fucking eat it. Which was the same. And when he said that to me, and I realized I was like, oh, that's so. I've been having arguments with idiots for years of how you're supposed to consume your shit. There's a there's a there's a, a place in um. Um, in San Diego, I ain't gonna put them on a the spot, but they have a grill where you can make your own steak. Well, you well you can do it yourself if you want. Oh, all right. But if you but they won't make it well done. If you order it well done, you have to make it yourself. <laughs> Why did you blow, blow them up? Who the fuck is that? It's not negative. We're not shitting on them. No, I'm. Not, I love it. It's, yeah. Um, what the fuck is it's called the Turf Club. The Turf Club. Yeah. So if you want it up to a certain degree, they're like, nah, you do that shit. No, just well done. It's so it's so blasphemous that it's like we're 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 not gonna waste our chef's time doing that. At least that's what I think the mentality is. Like we're not gonna the chef is a chef. He's a real chef. The, yeah. The, he's why we waste waste his time sh destroying this because because it really is true. Like 
well, eat your steak how you want. But a well done steak, you might as well get hamburger. Yeah, no, you, it is a hamburger. It's right. just a hard hamburger. Yeah, so it's like well, well done, fully well done. You, yeah, make it yourself. Yeah, make it yourself. That is actually a good. I, I do like that the Turf Club that they make. I like the idea that they're like we won't, uh, yeah. we won't. Well, and then someone's like, "What are you gonna make them do? Cook it themselves?" It's like, yeah, yeah, we will. Because uh, I, I love that. I love the because it's the only place I've ever been. I mean, I'm sure there's other places like this, but yeah, there's a grill in the dining room for that purpose. That's why I've never heard of that. Yeah, shit. and and you can you can make any steak yourself if you want. But, like you, was, but they but they suggest. They'll make it unless you prefer to make it yourself. Is that the deal? Exactly. They'll make yeah. it for you, but right. if you prefer to make it yourself, you can. <laughs> but if you want it well done, you have to make it yourself. See, because I've only only in recent years of my life have I been comfortable with like uh, the idea of. Oh, yeah. But also, if you want, that. if you want it like, like where it's so rare that it's not even cooked, black and blue or whatever you, they call you it, you also have to make it yourself. No, because they won't do that. Like, I'm not going to kill you. You get sick on your own. Right, right, right. <laughs> you did it. You have to you sign like, a waiver. Just order some tartar or whatever yeah. that shit <laughs> yeah, is. Because yeah. <laughs> both both things are weird to me. See, what I do, because I, I, like, I've only recently been good with, like, um, omakase. You know, the idea that, like, you let the sushi chef give you whatever they want to give you. Oh, man. Dude, did you do that shit with... I love it, dude. Rogan um, hooked me up with the with the with these with the motherfuckers in Texas. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, we went out to go steak. Whenever I'm there, it's steak with him. Well, no, well, no, he didn't come with us. Oh, oh, oh. But the, he hooked me with the owner, and they also have one out here, which I've also done. What's it called? It's called. I think it's called Sh- Sushi Texas. Sushi Texas. Or, and like uh, the one out here is called no, no, Sushi Bar. Sushi bar. sushi bar, sushi bar Austin, and sushi bar LA. I don't know what that is. Yeah, and they also have a pasta bar. So it's it, in in all their. They also have a burger place too. But in in all their places, they just make the one thing, and it's all what you call it. Omakase. Omakase it means chef's choice. I think right. And so, and I was like, man, this is gonna be. This is be it, it was one of those things where so. The first time I went, I took my I took a homie. Mm-hmm. And the second time I went, it was, you know, it was on a date, but mm-hmm. it wasn't someone that I knew that well. Ooh, first date? Second date. Yeah, that's but, early. But, but still, it was one of those things where it was like, this isn't a this isn't a date thing. No. This is something you, like, it's like. I, Friend thing. Because it was, it was a good date, but it was like. This is such a rare experience. Like you, you bring you bring your mom, you bring your brother, you bring your wife, you bring your wife. Things. Yeah, not the yeah. girl you're trying to date. Right? Yeah, no, because no. it's 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 too. It's gonna give the it's gonna give too strong of an impression. Oh, that's right. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's like I oh this motherfucker went above and beyond. It's like no, <laughs> right. this is just really good. You know what I mean? It, yeah. But it, it was so damn good. Sushi bar. Sushi bar. It was it's incredible, and it was omakase, and you didn't choose, and they just brought everything, and you ate everything. When you go in, there's a there are there's sixteen wooden plaques on the wall, and they're in order of what you're going to get. Oh, they show you. They show you up on the wall, and oh, that's then wild. and then and then there, there's also sake pairing, so you pay extra for mm-hmm. that. And so they come out and explain the shit. You know, I love that. What like. Oh, me see, I that's that <laughs> for my money. That's the best. That letting them show me an th- experience, I'm down for. Oh yeah, but. I, but I was arguing with this Nigerian motherfucker. I guess Nigerians, they don't do sushi. I mean, according to this guy. He well, was, he was like, what? The math doesn't add up, does you, it? You cook perfectly. <laughs> Is there a lot of sushi out in fucking Nigeria? No, but just the concept of eating something, that, that, of paying someone to not cook the food. That's that's how, that's how what he was. Like, they don't cook your food. Yeah. <laughs> Pay someone to not cook food. And, and, I tried, and, I was re- and I was repeating what they were saying. I was like, no, but you got to understand, this was shipped in. From the coast of New Zealand, and he was like, "Oh, so they say." Yeah, <laughs> he thinks it's. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Those are some good points. They could totally be bullshit. <laughs> right. It could all be bullshit." <laughs> yeah, this tuna could be from a can. I don't yeah. know. He's like, "Show me the shipping label." You're like, "Well, <laughs> we don't have it." Listen, but also true though, yeah. he is has a good point. He the does. skepticism of immigrants is good because they know that America is full of shit. Often, oh yeah, right when they get off the boat, they know. Yeah, they see all it. the shit they were told on the way here. Mm-hmm. They get off the boat and they like get robbed immediately, mm-hmm. and then they start going through it. Especially if they live in a major city or they move to a big. T- they move to New York first, and they start to see everything's kind of a fucking scam. Mm-hmm. Right. Everyone's full of shit. <laughs> Everyone's out for their own blood. Then immigrants start to teach the next generation. They're like, check a check a label. If they say it's from New Zealand Bay, 
Say you want to see where it comes from in New Zealand Bay. Say you want to talk to someone about mm. it because their skepticism is high. I do appreciate that. I want to talk to the motherfucker that was on the boat. Yeah. Let me see the cap. Get the fucking captain over here. <laughs> right. I buy into stuff. I'm quick to be like, it sounds real. Well, it's like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to ruin this experience by asking questions. Just right. Be I'm quiet. Fuck. Let the bitch juggle some flaming um, <laughs> chopsticks. Look, be quiet. Well, it's kind of like, I, I, if it's good, I accept it. We know when somebody's like, I can't believe. You know, when someone criticizes who, who, if you get food from a place that other people look down on, you know, like Taco Bell is the best example. When somebody goes, it's not even real meat. It's like, yeah, but if the, if they like it, who get, what the fuck is the difference? Yeah, what do you care? Tofu is, tofu is fucking soy fluff. They, somebody likes it, let them eat it. I don't give a fuck what's real and what's not real. Well, this place, see, that's why I also got to stop. Like, what I, what I hate is that I can't afford to just go there whenever I feel like it. Mm-hmm. And, but it's ruined sushi for me. So, yeah. like, I, like you know, I go down and I order sushi from a regular place. I'm like, this tastes like shit. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm insulted at this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because Judgment. I know I know how good it can be. And it's like, That's the perils of getting money. Yeah, y'all have access to the same fish. You know what I mean? But it, and all I saw, you know, like, this bitch would, like, she would, like, shave a grape and then blowtorch it and then sprinkle some matcha powder. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the details. And, and you take a, like you take a bite of this shit, like they, and they put one bite in front of you. That's it. You get one bite. Mm-hmm. And you and you and the first bite you get, it, 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 like everyone's just quiet. Just, mm, just making orgasm sounds. <laughs> oh my fucking shit. Yeah, man. It was How worth, much was it? Was it pricey? It was free. I mean, it was, oh, it, was, oh. it was it was covered because covered. yeah, it was you know, covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got but it. But I did tip on top of, so I know how much it would have cost me. Do it you would, know, you want to say it? I don't, I don't. I don't think they want me okay. to. Okay, don't yeah. do it. I'll tell you when we get up. Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. It, I put it to you like this: they they only serve. They do two shows a night, mm-hmm. and they only serve ten people. Wow, at a time. I got one guy. I, I should try to take you to this spot. I got a guy. Oh, here? Mm-hmm. Oh, where? Okay, yeah, it's yeah. It's only five tables. You got to text him. I got introduced through a friend. It's like exclusive. Kind of, I guess. I mean, it just. I think he just likes to keep it in a network and a small, and he's, our, I, I, my assumption is, well, I know for a fact he owns many restaurants. My assumption is this is a side project for fun. This is like painting at night for him. I love that kind of You know of what shit. I mean? He sells art on the big stage, but at night he's like, I'm going to do these little fucking side fun paintings. And these are the ones that I have the most fun with. In my mind, that's how I feel about him. Because he's a fucking goofball fun. It's like an, it's like a. Is it sushi? Yeah. Oh. It's, uh, it's, uh, but it's also, there's also, there's also meat. There's why they get, you get, you get like Wagyu and. Uh, yeah, some of that. Yeah. Wagyu. Yeah. yeah. They get, yeah. It's not just fish, I'm saying. It's, yeah. yeah but it's not, they're not throwing in fucking ramen. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'll have to take you because it's wild as shit. And it feels, it feels like you're. You know, you're like you're beating the food system. You're like, wow, I shouldn't. This is insane. But is it is it exclu- like, is again, is it like that one one of the things where it's like you can't, you shouldn't bring a f- date here. I would never, I would right. never, because then she'd be like, how do you know this? Then you'd have to have how many of those things would you have to have? Oh, you'd have to have a fucking full playbook of those kind of restaurants all the time. That would have. That's what I. That's when I just said before was getting a little bit of money is dangerous because then you get a taste for those things and you're like i want to do that all the fucking time yeah, i've wanna... seen comics we know mm-hmm. cancel spots <laughs> because they had a table at one of these places you know what, yeah, what i'm saying yeah dude but they're like yes. such and such cancel who why and then you see him the next day you go so what'd you do last night they're like yeah i had i had a table over here I'm couldn't like, get rid of you it. you cancel your spot over a table <laughs> yeah but it was so fucking good <laughs> right because once you get it it's hard to stop doing that it's hard and, and also like you said all I I used to eat, uh, you know, grocery store sushi or whatever from the. Fi- I used to eat that all the time, and I was satisfied. Yeah, I was fine. I liked it just fine. I would eat salmon on the fucking go when I would go to the store and do spots or whatever. I can't have it anymore. Nah. See, once you get the other side of it, you're fucked. Yeah, that I gross- can't wait till you get super rich and famous, and you become this big asshole who won't eat anything but the fanciest shit. You're getting there. Oh yeah. Well, yeah I'm it's like, gonna, listen, it's listen. Cap- I want a jet. <laughs> <laughs> to bring me the sushi, and I, I'm, 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 I want a first class seat for my cooler. Right, right. That's bringing me the sushi, and another first class seat for the chef to come explain the fish to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fly him over. Fly him over. Like you hear about uh, the dude from YouTube? How he like he he once flew his hat first class. Bono. Bono flew a fucking hat. He flew a hat. 
Some he left his hat somewhere and flew it first class. Get a new hat, bud. Just get a new hat. Just get a new hat. Fucking hats are everywhere. I worked when I when I first job out here. I worked in the my first job was working in the music industry, and uh, I won't. Mem- I'll tell you off air who. But the band member that we were working for was they had left a passport, um, in fucking Canada. They were on a private plane. They had left their shit at the hotel, and for some reason. We couldn't get a quick enough shipping to ship this passport back. Like we couldn't get a FedEx, wherever it location was. It was too hard to get it quick enough because they were leaving the country again. Okay. And they had to be on a, fl- on a regular plane where they had to show passport, not private. So they paid to fly a passport on a private fucking jet to Los Angeles from Canada. A, a fucking book. Two pilots and a book. But who has the book? An assistant. Jesus. But the assistant literally landed, handed it off to a man in an SUV. And that man in an SUV took it, went to the airport where they were waiting, and that assistant or whomever on the jet went right back. <laughs> they didn't even get to it. I mean, you enjoy a private jet flight, but like you literally went to a city to literally turn around and go back to another city. Dude, speaking of that, can we just, can we just appreciate these assistants out here? Yeah. Because. They do the most fucking uh, that annoying work that is a skill oh yeah it, it is a skill that because a lot of the people that are assistants they ain't built for it Mm-mm. it's there's there's a there are there's a uh, there's an echelon there's an upper echelon of assistants where it's like you you have to be so you have to you, like i didn't realize this until now and i'm not at the point where i can afford one but there are people you're you are keeping a whole other person's life together yeah, like yeah. a whole other family. You like you got like you know like you're an assistant. You got a you got a husband. You got children. Or you got a wife and kids. And you're you have to know where where my wife and my kids, <laughs> yeah. where they gotta be. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you're remember, organizing you other lives. All the little details. You know that my mother's allergic to garlic or whatever. Like you, <laughs> all that little shit. It would drive me insane. Insane. No, they're, 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 they're underappreciated and underpaid, which is kind of a wild thing. I, I don't have any want for that. We have a lot of friends that have like assistants or whatever, and I probably could use help sometimes with things, but I'm a stubborn old Midwest idiot that's like, you do it yourself. You get upset about it. You break your back. You get sad. You get depressed and overwhelmed, and that's a part of the experience, and you don't put the burden on somebody else. I also never trusted the idea of uh, having to teach someone because I was afraid it was going to get miscommunicated and it was going to fuck up. And I will say the thing I always say, which is I should have done it myself. And I say that around my house all the time. Pisses my wife the fuck off. You know, uh, oh, like- <laughs> somebody, did, somebody helped do the dishes last night and they did a terrible job. And you're like, I should have done it. I should have done it my fucking that, self. That is a, that is, that's a, that's a stealth. <laughs> like that's, the, it's, it's like a, that's like a high level ego jab you know like a, mm-hmm. like a like, but not a but not a punch like a like a knife hand straight yeah, yeah uh you know what don't feel bad i should have just did it myself <laughs> you know because you don't even have to yell you don't have to yell when you say that no it's, it's just a like, cutting phrase yeah man yeah, i should have done it myself yeah, i should have did it myself man it's not even mean it's just very it's just the bluntness is so heavy that it's that when people you say that and somebody hears you do that they're like oh well oh shit you imagine like 20 years from now you, you you know, one of your kids is like in prison or something, mm-hmm. and your wife's just going. I can only ah, hope. I did a fucking horrible job, and you're like, I should have done it myself. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I, I shouldn't, feel I shouldn't bad. Have let you be involved. I should have done it just by myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's such an evil thing. <laughs> I should have done it myself. Will be the name of my next special. Brian Simpson's gonna do my intro. Are Hell you yeah. on? Are you on on tour? What are you doing the new year? What's going on? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I got a couple of little test gigs to see, you know. Just to feel it out? Yeah, yeah. Man, I can't wait for this for you. I'm so dude, excited. I'm fucking sick of waiting, dude. Nah, it's I over. S- I've seen it's it. over. I've seen it, but I can't wait to see how people react. Well, it's over. Trust me. It's it's over. And if you are if you have any fucking brain whatsoever and you do love comedy and you really want to support uh, who I think is, I can't, you know, I don't want to fucking inflate you even more who i think is one of the best comics out right now and i I mean that i've said that to your face before and i really do mean it go on netflix uh watch the half hours uh watch his look there are other people on there and he's not going to say this but i can say it uh watch his first i'm sorry i know those other people i'm friends with them watch brian's i don't know the line do you know the lineup 
You know what that is? I don't know for sure, but I think mine's first. Okay. Well, watch this, motherfuckers, because I think actually I called that. By the way, I'm in a, I'm in a betting pool. Oh, where? Yeah, I bet that I bet the order. I won't tell you what I, I'll tell you off camera. Okay. Um, but I'm telling you, watch this dude special. And if you if you do get a chance when he does start jumping around the cities, you got to go see him. Uh, you got a website or some shit that you want to plug? Yeah. Uh, B uh, Brian Sim. Ugh. BS with Brian Simpson dot com is my website, and BS comedian that's all my socials. Good. So go check them out. We'll put them in the description below and watch the special, please. It would mean a lot. Leave a comment down below so other people know to watch that shit. Keep spreading it to everybody you know. I appreciate you so much. Yeah. Enjoy that bottle. Um, look in that camera right there, and we end the episode the same way. I want you to you say one word or one phrase to close the episode right there whenever you're ready. One word or one phrase. One word. I used to do one word when I first started this, and then people get flustered by a word. Then I, okay. I, I would go, okay, a phrase is fine then, a, small, a short phrase. Um, revenge is only worth it if you can get away with it. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.